All right, so today we're going to solve equations. Now, in the past, some equations that we've done we would have not been able to get um, a solution, or more correctly, a, a real solution. And one of those is this, this here, if we have a, a sum of squares. <clears throat> So we know a difference of perfect squares where we had, say, x squared minus 9 equals 0, and we knew we could um, solve those things. But when we had a plus like this one here, x squared plus 16 equal, in the past we would have, had a, have said it has uh, no solution. Now, hopefully I've been more specific than that because... Um, more correctly and has no real solution. All right, so it doesn't have a real number answer, but <clears throat> it can um, be solved. So, and it can be solved if we do the following. All right, so since I squared is equal to negative one, what we can do is we can rewrite this as x squared minus 16i squared. And so then now we've got a dots and we can solve that. So we can factorise it. So let's factorise it. So dots, difference of perfect squares, two brackets, one bracket has a plus, the other has a minus x in the front because x is squared to get 16 it's 4 and and i 4 and i all right so then we go to the null factor law so the null factor law says that if you've got two things multiplied together and equal zero then one of them must be equal to zero <coughs> so x is negative 4i or x is 4i so whenever um, x is one of those, then we can get a solution. And so often we'll write that as plus or minus for i, plus and minus, plus or minus. All right. <clears throat> so there's that one. And so now we can solve those sorts of things over the real field. So here's another example. And I'll show you another diff a different method of solving this one. So the previous one I used uh, factorization. What, I, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm going to do a different method. Um, so if 2z squared plus 6 is 0, I can rearrange and say 2z squared is negative 6 divided by 2 both sides. Uh, so z squared is negative 3. And so then if I square root, z is plus or minus the square root of negative 3, which of course there's no real answer to, but there is a complex imaginary answer, complex number answer, I should be more specific, because negative is i squared, and so now it's plus or minus square root of 3. We'll write a square root of 3 and i squared. We can square root that and get i. So plus or minus square root 3i. So that's just another method of solving when you've got that sum of uh, squares thing. All right, now some quadratic equations. Let's have a look at some quadratic equations. So quadratic equations here, we've got one, solve this. Because it's a complex, going to be a complex answer. You can check that because you can go the discriminant. The discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac. And so it's 5 squared minus 4 times 3 times 3, so it's 25 uh, minus 36, which is negative 14. So normally we go, oh, well, there's no solution, which, of course, there is no solution. 
in the real number field. So if we were graphing that, that tells us that there's no um, x-intercepts if it was x. This is z. All right, so there's no real number answer, so there's no point in us trying to factorise it. So what we can do is we can use a quadratic formula. So rather than finding x, we're finding z. And of course, it's still the same. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, so b uh, is 5, so negative 5 plus or minus. All right, b squared minus 4ac bit, that's our discriminant, of course, which I've already worked out up here. Except I can't add, because that's not 14, is it? Or I can't subtract, I should say. It should be negative 11, not negative 14. Sorry about that for those that I've confused. Okay, so negative 11 under there. Um, and then the bottom 2 times A, so 2 times 3. Let's get rid of that equal sign there so we don't confuse people all right and we'll just keep working from there so we've got negative 5 plus or minus square root of negative 11 so that's 11 i squared over 6 <clears throat> which then of course is negative 5 plus or minus square root 11 i over 6 and you may see it as negative 1 or positive 1 6 I should say negative 5 plus or minus root 11 I all right <clears throat> so that's pretty much it for this part um, again this is just the introduction early part of it so they can get a bit more complicated than that these equations but that's it for us for the moment um, the other thing is your calculator can work with complex numbers so you're just going to make sure you set your, your mode is set as complex let's bring up I don't know why it's not anyway not to worry um, so let's get rid of all that stuff clear all uh, let's get out of there so I don't need the keyboard oh, yeah, actually. so this bit down here that's it's real if I click on that complex and so now if I've got it on complex it'll solve things for me so if I just want to solve for example that one that we just did 3z squared plus 5z plus 3 equals equals zero solve it for z and then exe and there we are all right um that should transform combine Oops. there we go and now, now I've combined. <clears throat> All right, and so that looks a bit like what we've had before. All right, so it's a little bit different. So just remember, your calculator is not always going to give you things that are familiar. Because how did I? Here's what I had as my answer over there. All right, and this is what the calculator gave me: five six minus. All right, so it's going 5, 6 minus, so it splits it up. All right. And then here, then it's that split it up, and it's just taking the negative out, just programming. All right, so just be aware when you're using your calculator that the form that the calculator gives it to you um, <clears throat> may not be one that you are um, expecting, but where... I'm relying on how the programmers have decided to, to program the calculator for that. All right. Um, so that's it for those ones. Now, 
practice time. So there's some questions there for you to practice. And as always, have fun.